Hey there and welcome back to my channel. Now, I've been lucky enough to get my hands on the Samsung Galaxy E33 5G. This is Samsung's lowest mid-range phone for 2022. It's the A53 5G and the an even higher end and of course more expensive A73 5G. Now, I've had this phone for over a week. You know, I'm taking it to its paces, gaming, listening to music, doing all my work. And I must say, I am impressed sort of with the performance of the phone it has held up quite well battery life is pretty good so far with all that said it is expected because it is very similar spec to the e53 5g which is only slightly bigger than this one there's just some few improvements in the camera on the a53 over this a33 5g who is this phone for and should you go out and get one or should you go for the A53 5G or the even more expensive A73 5G? I'm Stefan for 868 Tech TV and this is my review of the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G. This video is sponsored by Phone Aid, located at the Crown Point Shopping Complex behind Church's Chicken. Check them out to get the Galaxy A33 at the amazing price of $2,450 TT and get a free case and tempered glass. The Galaxy A33 5G is a 6.4 inch mid-range phone that feels like a mid-range device, albeit on the higher end of the spectrum. While saying that, the phone doesn't feel cheap. There is some heft to it thanks to the Gorilla Glass 5 in the front that provides ample protection. There is plastic on the sides and on the back which of course is necessary to keep the price down while still doing a decent job of protecting the phone and even preventing those annoying fingerprints and smudges. At the top of the device, you can find one mic and the SIM tray. There is no space for an SD card. The volume rocker and power button are on the right. On the bottom of the phone, you have a speaker grill, USB Type-C port and your second mic. The second speaker is in the earpiece, the left side is clean as usual. The Galaxy E33, like most of Samsung's devices over the past few years, have a very familiar design. The main difference with this design is that the camera bump does not meld into the phone as it does on Samsung's more premium devices. It still looks good and is definitely one of the most recognizable and stylish designs. Unlike its bigger brother, the E53, the A33 has a teardrop notch for the selfie camera other than a dot cut out out of the display. One thing that sets this phone apart from most devices in the same price range is that the A33 boasts of IP67 certification. What this means is that you can fully submerge your phone in water as deep as 1 meter for up to 30 minutes. That is very impressive for a phone at this price range. This also brings some dust protection for your device as well. For the display, the Galaxy E33 has a 6.4 inch 1080p 90Hz Super AMOLED panel. The display is sharp enough for reading and watching content and with its OLED technology, Viewing angles are great and colors are accurate as one should expect from a Samsung phone in 2022. You can set the color to how you like it, whether you want it natural or vivid, and you can even adjust the color temperature further while in vivid mode. Watching your favorite movie, streaming your favorite series, and just about anything will be a joy as long as you're indoors though. You can choose between 90 and 60 Hz. You can choose 60 Hz if you want to save in battery, but that won't be necessary with this phone as you would come to find out later in this review. What is most disappointing about this display is the lack of brightness, particularly in direct sunlight. The screen is barely visible under the harsh Caribbean sun and you would do your eyes more harm than good trying to use this phone outdoors, especially in a bright sunny day. Straight out of the box, the Galaxy A33 is running Samsung's One UI 4.1 on top of Android 12 and has all the bells and whistles that comes with that OS as well as some nice tweaks Samsung has added by their own UI. These include color palettes, dozens of new widgets and just different ways to customize your phone and make it yours. If there is one positive thing you can take away from this device is a familiar software experience. 
If you've used any Samsung phones over the past couple of years, this device will seem very familiar to you. You have all your usual connections, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC, and VPNs. There is your edge panels, dual apps, link to Windows, split screen or pop-up view, Bixby routines, and a wide array of accessibility features for the visually and hearing impaired. For obvious reasons, some features from the flagship devices like Samsung DeX will not be available at this price point, but you won't necessarily miss it. Day to day, this phone definitely gets the job done. It's running the same 5nm Xnote 12 AT chipset that could be found in the Galaxy A53. You may experience some stuttering or app closures because the chipset just isn't powerful enough. And with just 6GB of RAM, that would put some extra strain on the already meager processing power. You can boost your 6GB of RAM up to 12GB of total RAM using RAM Plus, but that really only improves multitasking and does not improve your overall user experience. Gaming is just as good though as on the E53 with it being the same chip. Although with a smaller body, it does tend to run a bit hot during extensive gameplay. I was surprised that while the A33 shared so much in common with its bigger brother, I've experienced significantly way more stuttering, slowdowns, and app closures. Just something for you to note. You can unlock the Samsung Galaxy A33 by putting in your pattern or pen, using the very reliable fingerprint scanner, which I must say is one of the best even on any phone, much less on a mid-range device if I must say so, and a very hit or miss face unlock. Like other Samsung devices, this phone is protected by Nox security and does include a very popular and handy secure folder. This feature essentially allows you to have two separate sets of data on the phone with one side being hidden from plain view and is even protected further by a separate pattern or pin. One of the best characteristics of the Galaxy A33 has got to be the battery life. I was amazed at how they were able to cram the same 5000 mAh battery into this smaller body and achieve even better battery life than on the A53. Though a couple things may have helped with this, one of the major factors being the lower screen refresh rate of 90Hz and as mentioned before, it can go down lower to 60Hz for even better and longer battery life. This phone can easily get you through a day and a half and even more depending on your usage. I've never had to carry my charger to work in fear that my phone won't make it through the day. Charging is good at 25 watts, there's no super fast 120 watts charging, but it gets the job done faster than some of its competitors. Of course, there's no charging brick in the box, but thanks to the channel sponsor Phoneed, you can check them out and get your official Samsung 25 watt fast charging brick and get the very best charging speed for your phone. I am thankful for the Bluetooth 5.1 on board the Galaxy E33. Connection is fast and I've never had any problems by listening to music or podcasts with my earbuds. Audio from the phone, however, leaves much to be desired. Don't get me wrong, it is decent, but that's just about it. If you're in any kind of noisy environment, these won't be able to do it for you. Otherwise, you would be okay watching your movies or playing games with the phone audio, depending on where you're doing it. The song is provided by dual speakers, one at the bottom and the other in the earpiece and the best way I can describe the quality of the output is that it's just average. The Galaxy A33 have a quad camera setup, a 48 megapixel main camera with OIS, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, a 5 megapixel macro and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. There is a 13 megapixel selfie camera housing the notch on the front of the phone. During the day, all good lighting, photos from the 48 megapixel main camera are better than average. There's just enough dynamic range and details to make it slightly better than a budget phone. The main camera produces bright and punchy photos, which are synonymous with Samsung devices, while there is a noticeable difference in the color temperature on the 8 megapixel ultra wide lens. It does a decent enough job at portrait photos as well, though these come out a bit soft. You can shoot up to 4K at 30 frames per second on the main shooter and even the 13 megapixel selfie camera. The selfie camera is even worse than the main shooter, which is expected because it is a much smaller sensor, but I really didn't expect it to be this bad. Dynamic range really is hit or miss, and it's just good enough for those zoom calls or the occasional selfie while out in bright sunshine or in good lighting. 
I won't suggest doing vlogging with this selfie camera. I'll be frank here, the quality of photos and videos aren't great and I won't even go into low light photography and videos because it's just not worth it. If you're planning on buying this phone to take awesome pics and vids, you will be disappointed, especially in low light situations. So that was my review of the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G. Camera, as you can see in the photos, is lacking a bit of quality, especially compared to its brother, the E53 5G, which you can check on my full review right here. Battery life, I must say, was absolutely amazing. Screen brightness, once again, could have been much better, especially for what you're paying the other phones around the same price. Samsung could do better. But overall, this phone is for someone who wants a, a moderately powerful phone to get them through the day, great battery life, and an okay camera if you just want to take some odd photos or videos. It can shoot in 4K, you do have that option there. If you have one of these or you're thinking about getting one, let me know your thoughts down in the comments and stay tuned for more reviews coming soon. Once again, special thanks to PhoneAid for sponsoring this video and look out for much more from both of us very soon.